Welcome to Bull Market Thinking. I'm your host, Takoa Da Silva. With us here today on the line is famed investor and author, Jim Rogers. Jim, getting right into it, I saw a comment of yours recently regarding the Cyprus, the banking system fiasco that's going on there. In terms of this now setting a precedent of governments uh, simply taking people's money, what did you mean by that when you said that in terms of this now setting the precedent? Well, I mean, that's condoned by the IMF, by the European Union, um, and everybody else in sight that a government in need can take assets, uh, take more assets than everybody ever. We all knew they could tax us. We all knew various things. But this is the first time of which I'm aware where they've gone in and taken bank accounts. Now, they took gold from people in the U.S. in the, in the 30s, and they've done other things like that. But I have never heard of them taking, just taking bank accounts. Now, they're doing it. So now, be careful. They can take your bank account under this precedent. Mm-hmm. Now, so Jim, basically what this means is that any country anywhere in the world at any point in time, starting right now, that finds itself in a similar circumstance might do the exact same thing as, as, as Cyprus did, yeah? Well, it's now in their, uh, in their bag of tricks. But yes, they can do anything they want to now. Uh, I, I, for one, well, I, for one, am worried, and I, for one, am taking preparations. Who knows if I'm right or not, but I have rather be safe than sorry, as all of those people who had money in Cyprus have learned. They thought they had a normal bank account. Normally, people don't take money out of your bank account, but now it's been done with the sanction of many governments and institutions. Mm -hmm. Jim, what preparations are you taking right now? And I respect your privacy. If you can't comment to that, that's fine. And also, what types of preparations would you recommend for other people to consider uh, to get ahead of um, any potential scenario like this? Well, let's forget me for the moment. Tell you what I would suggest, which is more important, I guess. Uh, if I had more, if I had money in a bank anywhere in the world, but certainly in Europe, where uh, I had more than the guaranteed amount, I would make sure I got it down to the guaranteed amount. Now, I say down to the guaranteed amount because in Cyprus, in the end, they, you know, in fact, people's bank accounts are guaranteed for 100,000 euros. Uh, and they, and they respected that. I mean, initially they were going to take that too. <laughs> they were going to take everybody's money, uh, under 100,000 euros or over. Then they, after the protest, they decided they wouldn't hurt the quote little people. So what I might consider doing is if they have bank money in any account anywhere in the world, this year, I would cut it down to under the guaranteed amount. That does not mean they won't take that too someday when things get desperate, because something has been said. But that's where I would start. I would consider starting if I had money in the bank anywhere in the world. So, Jim, um, now, what types of assets can a person find refuge in here? Because when we've spoken in the past, you've told me that you're more of a financial market investor. Uh, so does this mean that people now need to look more towards the physical ownership of the hard assets rather than just their financial counterparts trading on the exchanges and so forth? Well, uh, everybody has to make their own decisions. But if you have something which is accessible, easily accessible to the government, it's more likely to snatch that than if you have, you know, something somewhere that they don't know about. I mean, if you've got a car, well, the problem is they would know about a car. Um, but if you have furniture or paintings or something, they don't know about it probably. Um, so anything that, that they know about, they might easily take. In America, we have what I suspect will happen in America is that they will take our pension plans. In America, we have 401k plans, uh, IRAs, various and sundry pension plans, which the government knows about. I suspect that's what they will take in America next. Um, And that's partly because, you know, in America, they're going to say, the excuse will be, that uh, one of my reasons for saying that is in America, the... um, Bank accounts will be, well, I mean, everywhere in the world taking bank accounts causes a hue and cry. I, the American politicians have seen what a hue and cry it is, so I suspect what they would take next would be the pension plans, and their rationale would be, well, most people have not been doing very well in their IRAs and pension plans for the past several years, so we're going to help you. We're going to take your pension plan and give you government bonds so that you have a gap. He'd return. Now, of course, that'll be a disaster, but uh, 
that's how they will they will ra- uh, rationalize taking our money. And they know about where all the pension plans are because we have to report it. So it's, they're easily accessible by governments. They know where they are. They know what they are. And they'll be able to snatch them away. But, I mean, I don't know. Who knows what they'll do. They'll certainly find some way to take our money when things get worse and worse. They always have. When I say they, I mean government. Jim, looking here at the short side for a moment, I know that you always keep an eye out for markets that are overdone to the upside. And when you look at the S&P uh, running up here the way it is, is there a great danger there in terms of being short the general equities market? Well, I have to leave that to everybody. Uh, it's certainly no question that the American stock market uh, is making all-time highs, in my view, based on the artificiality of the central bank in America printing a lot of money, and all for central banks printing a lot of money. Uh, to me, it's artificial. Uh, it's going to end badly. The, the government's theory, of course, is that they're going to uh, print all this money, get the economy going, and then things will be okay again. I happen to think that's probably not going to, uh, to, to work that way, but everybody has to make their own decision. It certainly, we now have central banks all over the world for the first time in recorded history printing a lot of money. Uh, and this usually winds up causing uh, currency instability, causes higher interest rates, inflation. That's what's always happened in the past, and I expect it will happen again. Jim, I've got one more question for you, and that is the last time we spoke, uh, you mentioned North Korea in terms of it being an interesting place to invest. What are your thoughts here now as they take us into news headlines regarding conflict and so forth? Uh, well, North Korea is a serve and cheap. You know, one of two things is going to you know, blow it up, and uh, it'll be a great opportunity for somebody to invest in North Korea. Or, what I suspect is going to happen more likely is that they will merge with the South uh, sometime in the next few years, and then you'll have a new uh, a powerhouse, a country that's going to be very strong, because if you have to co- combine North and South, it'll be great things that will happen. Uh, other things that are sort of cheap, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, Russia might be cheap. Um, I have been buying Russia for the first time in 46 years, or 47 years. Uh, Japan, I, if they continue to do what they're doing and the market comes down, that might be a place to invest. Agriculture, I'm still optimistic about. These are some of the things that I see on the horizon. All right, well, Jim Rogers, famed investor, author, I want to thank you so much for coming back and sharing your comments with us again. Okay, thank you. Anytime. Bye-bye.